take this thing off so I can speak. <laughs> Hello everybody, it's been a very, very long time since I have done a Facebook Live with the camera on. We are still in, well I'm still in lockdown mode. I, I don't leave my house that much at all. I went shopping today. I'm about to get some gas for the first time since April. <laughs> so it's an interesting world that we live in. Um, but I want to talk about a game that I'm sure every single one of you has played and the game is called Monopoly. All of us have played it at some point of our lives. It is a very, you know, probably with that game and the game of life, uh, the first games that a youngster is ever exposed to, how the financial system works, how buying land and property and building upon it to uh, have more resources in your hand actually works and it's a simple concept and I think the er the youngest I was whenever whenever I played that game I might have been maybe six six or seven years old and I remember in my earliest days playing that game that you wanted to be the first one off the board meaning off to, to get started you wanted to be the first one to roll the dice you know, the first thing we all fought, fought over though was uh, the uh, icons that you were using. The the wheelbarrow, the tin hat, uh, the, the thimble, the shoe, the car. Everybody wanted to be the car. The little dog. And in my family, uh, with myself, my, my cousins and whatnot, we would always fight. And I always was the car because I was the oldest. So I got first dibs. Uh, but I got the car. And then... Um, then we would all roll the dice to see who gets to go first. And you hate it being last, right? Because what happens if you last? That means that once you finally get off go, there's a higher chance that you're either going to land on uh, going to jail or you're going to land on somebody's property that you have to pay because you land on their property uh, or, you know, there's, or, or you're on a tax or whatever. So you're not, the whole point of the game is to be the first to get on that board and around the board to land on the property so that you can purchase the property. And why is that so important? Because if you could buy the property, now if anybody lands on your property, you get paid. Now, if you go around the entire board, what was it, $200 or something like that, you get paid for pass and go? So at least by completing the board, you get $200. But if you land on property, you now can buy the property. And when anybody lands on your property, they're paying you a percentage. Now, if you get three properties in a row, unless you're, uh, what is it? What was the first? Baltic? I forgot what the other one was. Those were the cheapest property. But the other most expensive was Boardwalk and Park Place. And you knew. If you got Boardwalk and Park Place, man, you was going to kill it, right? Because anybody lands on that property, they got to pay the most for the property tax. I mean, if you got a, a uh, set of three or two, then you can start building houses on those properties and hotels on those properties. So now when people land on that property, guess what? That's more money for you. And the whole goal of the game is to amass enough property so that you have an income coming in whether you go around the board or not. Sometimes it's even more beneficial for you to go to jail <laughs> and sit in jail for three turns so that you don't land on anybody else's property so you gotta pay. Uh, so the reason why I bring that game up, oh, let's not forget, we all start off with, how much is it? I think it's uh, $1,000 that we all start off with. Let me make sure I'm alive, yeah, I'm alive. $1,000 you get to start off with 
so that you have the resources to actually buy the land once you land on the property. Why do I even bring that up? And why did I take us all through memory lane uh, on the game of Monopoly? Because in a lot of ways, that's how life is as well. Life is the same way. You know, every single year we, we finish a year and we're going across the board and then we've got a, you know, we look at, we, we, we file our taxes so we show how much we made that year and a lot of people are waiting for their tax returns and whatnot, but we are all playing the game of Monopoly. Every single one of us, we are all playing the game of Monopoly. However, there is a difference. And this is the difference I believe, in my personal opinion, that majority of the people don't understand. They don't get it. The majority of the people believe that we live in a world right now where the playing field is even. The playing field is leveled. All of us are starting at the game of Monopoly and giving a thousand dollars and now we're just rolling our dice to go around to buy our property. When as a matter of fact, what if I were to tell you every time you go around that board represents one year. And for maybe 50 years, everybody, no matter race, color, or creed, no matter religion, no matter sexual orientation, no matter uh, your, your poverty level, rich or poor, I think maybe the last 50 years, everybody has been allowed to play the game allowed to play the game but what if I told you that the game didn't start 50 years ago the game started 400 years ago now if the game started 400 are we back all right Facebook do not do not mess with me I haven't done a Facebook live and I don't know how long and I'm about to say something important and you want to shut me down <laughs> All right, let me make my point. The game of Monopoly started 400 years ago. And it started when not everybody was allowed to play. So for 400 years, only a select few of people were able to roll the dice, go around the board, and buy up all the property. They also were given resources to buy the property. And then when they bought the property, they started building houses on the property. They started building businesses on the property. They started building hotels on the property. So anybody that lands on their property has to pay rent, has to pay restitution, has to pay due to their property. And then since people don't live 400 years, when they die, they pass on that property. They pass on those houses. They pass on those businesses and those hotels to the next generation. So now the next generation is still playing the game of Monopoly, only this time they're starting off life with the property, with the houses, with the resources. And every generation is building on the previous generation for 400 years and then 50 years ago laws are passed that now are allowing for the very first time everybody to play the game as well only there ain't that much property left the property's already been bought the land that people are working on the land that people are living on. They're paying rent to somebody else who already played the game of Monopoly and passed on those resources to their descendants. Now the descendants are like, what are you talking about? I'm playing the game of Monopoly just like you. I don't have a, a, a leg up. I mean, it's an even playing field. 
You got to pull yourself up by your bootstraps. You got to put yourself through school and work hard and you're going to have the same benefits as everybody else. But that individual, for whatever reason, and I don't know if it's by willful, willful ignorance or they just really don't know that the game has been played for 400 years and that your economy, your society, your neighborhood, your community has 400 years of resources being passed amongst each other. And then you expect the community that's just got a chance to play for 50 years that was not given a thousand dollars at the beginning that there's no property for them to be able to own in the first place and the little bit of property they did get as those communities started to grow the majority didn't like having the competition so they went in and burned it down black wall street rosewood new york Tulsa, Oklahoma, Florida, any point in history where the group that was not allowed to play the game figured out how to do it on their own, it was taken from them and they're told you need to play the game. But when they play the game, there's no more property left and the property that they land on, they need to pay rent to. Are you guys getting the picture here? <laughs> Is this making sense? My 12 year old understands it. I don't understand why somebody in their 40s and 50s can't figure it out. So when you think to yourself, I was born in the 50s, I was born in the 60s. I went to school, I worked hard. I got my education, I got my job, I got my house and everything. How come they can't do it? Why is there so much violence and crime in their community? See, when you're in a situation where you don't have the resources, you don't have money, you don't have jobs, you don't have opportunity, you're not allowed to live in, in certain areas, you're not allowed to send your school kids, your school kids to certain areas, what does that breed? violence crime see violence and crime and criminal activity is not inherent to one race it is mostly based on economics it doesn't matter what the race is if you're in a situation in a community where the economics is bad you're gonna have an increase in violence and everything else that comes with it and crime and all that is an economic issue, not a racial issue. So yeah, while it's good and great that we all are now have a level playing field that we can make it. My family is a prime example that if you do put your head down and go to work, like my father did, born and raised in Compton, California, becoming the CEO or the general manager of the largest water foundation firm in the United States of America, the highest ranking official in the country. That's the great American success story. But what people don't know is that that same company had a hiring policy against minorities. That when he started that company, the only thing they allowed him to do was wash the company cars and drive company execs around town. That's all they allowed him to do. But you want to say we all had an equal playing field. My father's an exception to the rule and until the majority of Americans can recognize this fact and empathize to this the system and the status quo will never change and all you're gonna hear them say is how come people are rioting out there and looting I mean crime does not solve the problem and never ever does it come in their mind to think the underlying issue on why they're doing it in the first place. What's causing them to reach out and scream out in this fashion? It's easy to say, go get a job. 
it's easy to say, well, you know, it maybe if my family had uh, houses for the last 200 years and they're being able to pass down the equity of their homes to their families, which puts kids through school, puts kids to start their own businesses that the next generation can build on, the next generation can build on. They've been playing Monopoly for 400 years. But then you want to chastise our community because we've only been allowed to play for 50. And the only income we're getting since we don't own nothing is once we pass go and get $200. The playing field is not equal. It can be. We're getting closer. Baby steps. But if you are listening to me right now and you still don't get what I'm saying, that's why we're in the situation we're in right now. That's all I had to say. Peace out, everybody. Enjoy the rest of your day. The game of Monopoly. Let's play to win. God bless. Bitcoin Brandon out. Bye-bye.